Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I go through a complete setup guide for installing flaperons with a AR620 receiver and the Spectrum DX6 transmitter. Let's get to it. Flaps are used by basically all aircraft today, for sure with any high performance aircraft, all jet airliners, but most light aircraft have flaps. Flaps are a movable surface at the trailing edge of the wing for just normal flaps. Uh, they're separate from ailerons and flaps do two things for any wing. They increase lift and they increase drag. Uh, when flaps are down perhaps a, a half, halfway down or so, there's a lot of increase in lift, not too much drag if you're flying slow. So it's quite often to use a percentage of, of flaps, not full flaps for takeoff because you're going slow, there's not too much drag. When you're landing, when you want a lot of drag and a lot of lift, flaps are full down. And for a high performance aircraft like an airliner, you, you, to do a no flap landing in a jet airliner is really hard to do. The jet's going very fast. It doesn't slow down. It's very common these days to have flaps in our RC model airplanes. They're really not too hard to do these days with the computer radios. And let's take a quick look now at a video of uh, normal flaps and ailerons on a PA-18 aircraft. There's a link in the description if you'd like further information on this. The um, ailerons are shown here just going back and forth. And then there are separate flaps. It's a two position, um, half and full down. Half is usually used for takeoff, soft field takeoffs on the real aircraft or models. And you can see with the full flaps, they go down a lot. A lot of drag, a lot of lift for short field landings. This is my design of the Boeing uh, Scout, L-15 Scout, and as you can see in the video, it flew, it flew fly very well. It's a fun aircraft to fly. It was an interesting design project with the tail boom and so forth. And what happens on this model, you can see here there are fairly large um, flaps. Now on the real aircraft, these long surfaces are flaps themselves. Because it's designed to be a short takeoff and landing aircraft to get into small airfields, the ailerons are actually spoilers on the top of the wings. But what I did for this model, and just a, a design decision, I took what were the flaps and used them as ailerons. In this video, I'll show you how to combine these very large and effective ailerons to also be flaps at the same time, hence the term flapperon. When we've taken the model apart now, it just goes into two parts, uh, the wing and the tail boom and the fuselage cab. In here will be the receiver, the ailerons of the wings, and we'll see how things are demoed from in, in that setup. So let's take a look at the underside of the wing of my Scout airplane. And you can see here, just a normal elevator servo. We're not gonna worry about that. These are the two servos that connect to each aileron with their own controller. To do flaperons, it is a requirement. You must have two servos. It cannot be done with one servo. The other thing that you're going to need for um, a requirement to do flaperons on any airplane, to include this discussion, you need at least a six channel receiver. Uh, the smallest receivers you get are typically four channels. You need the six channels so that they can talk separately to the two ailerons, uh, two servos to function in both an aileron and a flap function. In addition to a six channel receiver, you have to have a computer radio with a minimum of six channels. So this is my trusty Spectrum DX6 radio. I've had it for a number of years. Uh, I think they go up to 20 now channels, but you need at least six and the computer to do their computer magic, to talk to the servos, to behave in both an aileron and flap um, function. And again, I'll show you how to set that up and you'll see clearly in the demonstration how all that works out. Before we talk about setting up the transmitter, let's just take a look at how the flaperons work so you can envision what we're doing here. So this is the fuselage. The receiver is right here, and that would be inside obviously during flight. The battery is already hooked, pitched up. Notice the prop is off for safety, so in case we bump the throttle, we're not gonna hurt ourselves. And there are the two servos hitched up there. So what'll happen is we have the normal aileron control here and notice these behave just like normal ailerons for any of your rc models and i will show you how to set up this radio i have put the flaps on switch number d you can use any switch you want say three position switch so this is up now take a look at the flaps 
is halfway down and all the way down. So notice the ailerons work fine and when they're down halfway they're still ailerons. When they're down all the way they still work as an aileron function. So that way when you're landing the flaps are down for the higher lift and drag for landing yet you still have roll control with the ailerons. What we will do now is take a quick overview of the receivers and the ports because sometimes that's not clear to the instructors what, how you set up um, these ports and so forth. This is an example of a Spectrum uh, AR410 receiver. It's a four channel receiver. We'll go to the 620, the six channel in a moment. But you'll notice that you have your um, pins here to install your servos. And it starts off in this case with a battery and channels one, two, three, four. So there are five sets of pins. The order of which pin does what can be a little bit confusing is oftentimes not covered in the directions. You do a Google search, I'm going to tell you now. Number one is always the plug-in for the electronic speed control. So I repeat, number one is always the plug-in for the electronic speed control. This is a normal speed control. The three wires always go to the motor. The two wires of black and um, uh, red go to the battery. And this is the one that plugs into the receiver. And as a reminder, the three wires, the dark one could be brown, it could be black. So the black or the brown one in this case and the red are the power and the yellow is the signal. So what happens for any electric powered model and the brown black goes to the bottom you simply plug this into port number one. Now the remaining three ports are in alphabetical order, aileron, elevator, and rudder. So this would be a throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Now you'll notice there's another port here on all receivers, it is B-A-T-T. -T. The B-A-T-T -T stands for battery. What happens is this receiver can obviously be used for either electric powered bottles or gas powered bottles. When you have a gas powered model, you have to have a separate battery in the airplane to power up the electronics, the servos, the receiver. And so back before electric power, we always had what we called a flight battery to go there to power up the electronics in the airplane. Through the magic of our electronic speed controls, it has the ability to take off some of the power from the battery you're using for your motor to power the electronics in your mo power the electronics in your aircraft so we never have to worry about a flight battery. So what that means is for all of our electrical powers the BATT port, the battery port, is just left blank. You don't plug it in. The electrical function is handled by number one, which is for the um, for the throttle. And if it was a gas powered motor there'd be a servo plugged in here. The servo would control the throttle on the gas motor. One other item I'd like to point out is aileron servos. Back in the old days of RC flying in the 70s and 80s, the servos were big, heavy, and, and they were quite expensive. It was very common to have one servo power both ailerons. You'd use bell cranks and push rods to do that. Today, the servos are small, super lightweight. It's much easier to install two separate servos um, to control the ailerons. You can still do that with a four channel receiver. What is very common, Notice this is plugged into port number two, which as I, we discussed earlier was the ailerons. This is what's called a Y connector. And when you plug this into this port and two servos, they're both controlled by that port. So you can have separate aileron servos. You can even have two servos for the flaps if you want to do it with a Y connector. We do not, I repeat, we do not use the Y connector for flap rods because there's going to be separate computer signals to each aileron to do the magic of differential aileron control and the same control with the flaps. Let's take a look now at the Spectrum AR620 six channel receiver. Now, I'm not getting any money from Spectrum, but I absolutely like and use these Spectrum systems all the time. What is super nice about this AR60, two things. First of all, well, a couple more than two things. It's very small and lightweight. It's a six channel receiver. You'll notice that there's no antenna wire because the antenna is built into this receiver. I have lost models due to antenna wires breaking off. Very easy to do. The antenna wires inside, all the worries about orientation of the antennas are gone. 
The other thing is, this is a push button right here. If you push that, that's how you bind the receiver to your transmitter. No more plugs fiddling around, just this huge bind button makes it super easy. So as we discussed before, here is your BATT port. So there's battery and then one through six, so a total of six connectors. Notice the darker wire, the brown in this case, is to the bottom and the uh, signal is an orange or yellow depending on your system. As before, the number one port is always electronic speed control. This is the electronic speed control already installed in the model. And then over here um, is, again, alphabetical order, aileron, elevator, rudder. Number five is gear. And number six is an aux or an extra port. We know, because I'm telling you now, that to set up the flap rods, we're going to put one aileron servo into number two, the other aileron servo into port six, and then by programming the transmitter, make these work together. So that's the key thing of this receiver, one aileron in port two, the other aileron in port six. Once you have put those servos into two and six in the receiver, there's no programming or anything else you have to do to the receiver. We're going to do everything now through the transmitter. I'll use my DX6 computer transmitter, but it should be similar for other transmitters. You'll have to check the owner's manual for specifics, but this will work with the Spectrum DX6. Let's take a look now at what we have to do to set up the transmitter. And this is only done in the shop. You don't, once it's set up, everything's good to go once you turn it on the field, but it has to be done this way. So this is a screen right here. I've got my model name, the timer, the positions. That's pretty standard. In the DX6, I pr push the scroll wheel once, and I get to a thing called a function list. Okay, the function list is things that could be done on a fairly regular basis, like servo setup and so forth. With this one, we're going to go down to a submenu called system setup. When I press system setup, you'll see this go to say system list. First of all, it says I'm by doing this, I'm going to not be transmitting. That's okay. And there's system setup. These are things that you do one time. For example, a model name, it's a little bit confusing, but model type, don't use that because that's um, airplane helicopter. We're going to go to aircraft type. And that was the way we tell the model, we're going to set up flaperons. So the aircraft type, here we have the flaperon set up. There's a picture of two wings, two ailerons, and two servos. Notice when we go down here and we press this, we could have a choice of one aileron, one flap. We could have two ailerons, one flap, elevons, and so forth. So we're going to go back and tell the computer that we're doing flaperons. So that's done once. The tail is normal. That just means a regular elevated rudder. So we're complete with that portion of the setup. Now we can go back to the main menu. And because we selected flaperons, there's another item in here called the flap system. And what we do is we press that. And the flap system is, you, the thing you do is you can pick a switch. So this is switch D right here, which is switch D right here. You can press this and have other switches like C, for example, which is over here, just depending how you want to set up your flaps. I am using D. And then what happens, position zero is up here. You notice if I push this switch down one, it goes to position two. Down here, it goes to position three. And that's a percentage. Zero percentage is up. In this case, negative 38% is partially down. Negative 100% is all the way down. And you can also put in some elevator. Typically, you trim the elevator when you add flaps. I'm not going to bother with that here, but that's what that is for. So once that is all done, you have completed the setup for the flaperons on your airplane. And now it's just a question of using them with the switches, switch D to raise a lower than the ailerons normal. If the ailerons are reversed, just a normal um, um, uh, servo reversing function that we use all the time for our, our transmitters will set that up and then we're good to go. I've now connected the battery. Again, the prop is off and we've connected to the ailerons. One thing I want to show you that's very helpful is I take the time to put a little scotch tape R there 
and R located over here, just so we're connecting them up the right way. It'll save putting on the wing and getting it backwards. Everything is here with port number two and six to the respective ailerons. And because we set everything up, just go to the field and notice, get this a little bit out of the way, uh, the normal aileron functions are like that. And then the switch on D, partially down, all the way down, and we still have differential ailerons while we have the flat function for landing. So thank you for joining me in this video. It's very easy to set up for flap rods. It's a fun thing to do because many of our models have the strip ailerons. It's super easy to put those in and just add another dimension to your fun for RC model airplane flying. Thank you.